Well, hello there, friends. Another fantastic recipe today. Chicken Parmesan. Really easy to do. It's kind of like a chicken milanese with a tomato sauce and a Parmesan cheese. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. All right, friends. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this recipe. I promise you. Anybody can do that. There's a few tricks. I'm going to show you them. Easy. You know, I don't make anything complicated. If it's complicated, I'm not doing it. And you're not gonna do it. <laughs> so let's make it easy, right? Cooking is supposed to be fun, so let's have fun together. Chicken breast. Look at this, boy, this is like a big chicken. We're gonna take a chicken breast right there, and we're gonna cut it in half. Now, we're gonna make a scallopini. I do this in my chicken francaise, I do this in my uh, uh, chicken milanaise. Uh, I do this in, actually, basically, it's a milanaise with a tomato sauce and the Parmesan cheese on it. Very simple, huh? Take a chicken breast right there, make sure it's clean, extra fat, any gristle, you don't need anything. And if you notice, there's two sides to the chicken, right? This is the inside, this is the outside. You notice the outside is very nice and smooth, no difference in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in shapes. And right there, look at this, look at uh, mountain valley right here, it's all different, right? So we're gonna put the outside on the cutting board so we know what's underneath, nice and flat. So then when we cut it in half like this, we'll know exactly where we're going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife right here and I'm gonna cut this up and down, up and down, up and down like this until I got two beautiful scallopini, okay? It's very important then it's flat and it's important also you get a long knife if you got one. If you have a chef's knife, it's difficult. That's why it's important, friends, to get a slicer or at least to get a boning knife. Get a boning knife. It's very thin, you see? And this makes it easier. But you see, look, remember when you use a knife, friends, you have to sew the food. You have to activate the microscopic burrs, and we call burr, or microscopic teeth, and we call burr. You, we have to activate them, kind of like using a serrated knife. You activate it, right? So what I want to do is I want to go up and down with my knife, all right? And if I have only a small knife, hey, I don't, it's difficult. I don't have much uh, space right there, right? All right, so enough about the knife. Put your hand down, don't be afraid. Nothing's gonna happen to you. The knife is not gonna come and get you, right? And what you do, you make sure you put it in the middle, right? And you go up and down, up and down. See, look, look. see, I get half, I get half, right there, half, 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 right? So I'm so good, right? And I keep going. And don't be afraid, oh my God, I'm gonna cut myself. No, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not. You just can't pay attention. Don't go out there and be talking to somebody when you do this. You just pay attention and you get two perfect half. You see, my friends, look. A child could do this, okay? So now we're gonna sanitize our hand. It's very important. We're gonna sanitize our work surface. I always have a wet rag right there. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in the flour, all right? I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in the flour. And in the meantime, I'm gonna sanitize my cutting board. I'm gonna sanitize my knife. My rag has a little bit of uh, bleach water. I talked about this in another video. I don't wanna make a big deal out of it again. Otherwise, they're gonna say, here it goes again. So, but it's very important that we're nice and clean and organ and, and sanitized. Okay, friends? Really, really important. Otherwise, we're gonna kill somebody one day. So look, right there, we're gonna put the flour. Right there, we're gonna put the egg. And right there, we're gonna put the bread home. I'll talk about this in a second. Let me first break the eggs over there really quick. Okay, this is very simple, eh? Take a fork right there, break the egg. All right, break the egg, very simple. All right, and then we're gonna put salt and pepper. Salt and pepper in the egg. I got salt and pepper already in the flour. And I'll talk about the bread home in a second. Let me just grab a tongue. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try to keep my hands clean. And what I mean by that is um, I don't want my hand to get full of flour or full of egg because they get all gunky. And then, so you see, look, look, dry, dry, dry hands, dry hands right there, right? So now I'm gonna go in here right there like this, and I'm gonna take the, the tongue, and I'm gonna put them in here like this. Now it's very important, then you understand why it is we're doing here, friends. Same thing I do with the chicken milanese. Eh? If you watch the chicken milanese, then you've already know how to do this. Okay, flour makes the chicken dry, the fish dry. Whatever it is you're gonna put, eggplant, parmesan, same deal. Okay, the flour makes it dry, the egg makes it wet, 
And if you don't have a dry chicken, the egg is not going to stick, right? And then we're going to go to the breadcrumb. And the breadcrumb for the Parmigiana, I do uh, panko, herb de Provence, and Parmigiano Reggiano. Okay? And I got a lot of Parmesan. Smells wonderful, right? Look, look. And you notice I haven't touched anything yet, right? And the reason why I don't touch, I want to keep my hand clean so then my hands are not all gunky. Because if my hands are gunky, guess what's going to happen, friends? Guess what's going to happen? My breadcrumb is going to get all gunky. Let me turn the oil on so I don't wait too long. I'm going to use some beautiful basil olive oil. I love basil olive oil. I have a Tuscan olive oil that is wonderful. Basil olive oil. You don't have basil olive oil? Don't worry. Use a good olive oil. Okay? All right, now look. Dry. Wet. Remember, it's always dry, wet, dry. Dry, wet, dry. And you don't want to finish with a flour, you want to finish with a breadcrumb. So it's easy to remember which one is first, which one is second, and which one is third. And if you remember what you, why you're doing it, you understand it. You're drying the chicken so the egg will stick, and you're putting the egg so the breadcrumb will stick. It's pretty simple stuff. You see, it's not rocket science. Eh? You go in there right there, and you go like this. See, look, look, you don't have to touch it. Okay? So, by the way, this, friends, is an amazing meal. If you want to make it in advance, dinner party. You can prepare all this in advance. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, prepare all this in advance. And then when your guests come in for a dinner party, let's pop it in the oven. Done. Look, that's it, we're done. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to saute it. I got to make sure my oil is at 365. I'm going to saute it, I'm going to organize everything. You see, look, look, look at this. A child could do this, friends. All right, you want to put a little more salt and pepper on it? Feel free to do so, friends, okay? A little more salt and pepper. Let's check the temperature of the oil. I want to, look, you know, if you don't have one of them digital thermometer, you can certainly see it when the oil of oil is, is close to be 365, it's starting to shimmer a little bit. We don't want to smoke the olive oil, so it's very important that we make sure we don't overcook the olive oil. For, so you look at it, you keep an eye on it. When you start smelling it, let me grab another tongue. When you start smelling it, you'll know that you're getting close to releasing. When it releases the beautiful aroma of olive oil. Olive oil has a very low smoke point, 365 degrees. Then it breaks down and it's not a good thing. We don't want that. So I'm close to it. If I go into a coiled oil, an oil that is like 250 degrees, What's going to happen is my breading is going to soak up more oil than it needs to. I want to keep it as crisp as possible. That's why I want to go to a hot oil. Okay, so it's really important. Let's wait a second. You'll see it in a second. It's going to start uh, shimmer. We're right there. We're about 125 degrees. And you'll know it. You'll see it right away. We don't want the oil to overcook. We don't want it to break down because that's not good for us. So here we go. We're right there, friends. You can see it. All right, we're going to go in. All right, and we put it in, and when you put it in, see it see right there, don't touch it, don't be playing with it. All right, don't touch it, right there, friends. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get rid of this dry breadcrumb that we have on top here like this. We don't need it. And we're gonna prepare the chicken ready to go to the oven, okay? You watch, it's very simple, friends. First, we're gonna wait for it to get beautiful golden brown. That's why I say don't touch it. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Leave it alone right there, friends. Leave it alone. Let it get beautiful golden brown. And trust me, it's not going to take very long if your oil is hot. It's not going to take very long at all. Just another few seconds. You can shake it around a little bit. we we'll look at it. There you go. Look, 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 look. You see? Let's give it a second or two. Right there, see, it's looking beautiful. We're going to let it cook the same amount of time on the other side to make sure we have nice, beautiful golden brown on both sides because not only does it look good, but it tastes good. That uh, caramelization right there is very important. Those colors that it creates is really, really important, friends. And then we're going to put the marinara sauce. And I just made a, a, I just finished taping a, a video of the marinara sauce. So I think we're going to have it released already. It's a wonderful recipe that I've been making for 100 years. Okay, I got it. It's beautiful. You can do it lo more if you want. I just think it's plenty like this. Put it right there on the tray, friends. Right there. 
Okay, let's turn this off. We're done. Okay, so now what do we do? Very simple, friends. We take that beautiful marinara sauce that I made. And like I said, I have the recipe for this, okay, friends? I made the beautiful recipe for this. And it's very simple. You can make it in advance. You can put it in a freezer. And this, if you have a dinner party, by all means, friends, this is a beautiful right there, you see? You can make it in advance. You know what I can do sometimes, what I like to do? I like to put a little bit of a, a, a prosciutto di parma right underneath the tomato sauce, okay? Today we're gonna put some um, uh, 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 Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, Parmigiano-Reggiano, mixed with a little bit of mozzarella cheese. If, you don't have to use that if you don't want to. By the way, you can do the same exact recipe, friends, with um, uh, eggplant, same deal with eggplant. Delicious for a main course. Take your mixed cheese, Parmigiano-Reggiano, you can mix with a little bit of, uh, like I say, mozzarella cheese. Sometimes, believe it or not, I love to take a slice of brie with the prosciutto in the knees. Oh, yeah. Same deal, same deal. Look, look. Make this in advance, friend. friend. And then uh, when you serve your dinner party, finish it up with a little uh, uh, basil chiffonade at the end. Put it in the oven right now until the cheese is nicely melted. Be generous. When the cheese is nicely melt, and we're gonna put it in the oven, and when it's finished, we're gonna plate it with maybe a little chiffonade of uh, a basil on it. It'll be delicious. You can serve that with an egg noodles. Delicious. Here you go, friends. We're gonna take it out right there. Pop it in the oven. The oven is at 375. How long? Just long enough for the cheese to melt. It's probably gonna take maybe 10, 15 minutes. Depends how hot your oven is. But 375 is all you need. All right, so we're gonna wait a few minutes and then we're gonna take it out. We're gonna decorate it with a little chiffonade of basil or, or parsley or whichever one I got in my kitchen. Okay, here we go, friends. Out of the oven. All you gotta do, just put it on a plate like that. You can serve it with the egg noodles. You can serve it with... Um, uh, 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 potatoes, roasted potatoes would be delicious in there. I put a little chiffonade of, uh, of uh, basil on the plate, on the, on the chicken by itself, a little chiffonade of basil. That's just very easy to make a little chiffonade. I'll show you how to make that chiffonade when I do the, um, the, uh, the tomato sauce. Here we go, very simple. Here it is. This is a dish, folks, that can be served by itself. Just like that. It's absolutely an amazing chicken. You guys are gonna love that. Go ahead and make it. If you don't wanna eat it right away, you can certainly refrigerate it and eat it later on. It's wonderful. Either way, I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and ring my bell so you get a notification every Thursday when I put up a new video. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and make that chicken. It's beautiful.